eating yourself. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Thank you for unmuting yourself and for letting me know. Okay, we're, we're good to go now. Somebody should have should have done that earlier, but thank you. Thank so, you. I was last resort. <laughs> yep, there you go. Okay, guys. So in a nutshell, guys, what we did here, for those of you guys watching, I'm going to take a minute to go back. When people ask, is, is solar too expensive? It seems too expensive. Here's what it costs for this guy. 23000 minus a tax credit of 6000 That leaves 17000 net system cost. We take what they're paying yearly, 138, multiply that by 12 months, okay? When you multiply that number by 12 months, here's what happens. That gives you 16, what? 1656, 1656. You divide the 1656 by the 17,000. When you do that, it gives you 8.6. That means in 8.6 years, your customer's gonna pay their utility company the 17,000. This puts things into perspective and it lets them know solar is actually not as expensive as I thought it was. So that's one of the misconceptions that we're attacking right now. Okay, so anyways, that's basically where we left off. So let's keep going over here. All right, so is it too expensive? Okay, there's gonna be a lien on my property. Let me give you guys some advice. A lot of real estate agents, how many of you guys wanna recruit real estate agents? Okay, a lot of real estate agents think and by the way, guys, come over here to these seats here. I feel like I have to talk louder when people are back there. A lot of real estate agents and a lot of homeowners, they think that you need it, that, that when they go solar, they're going to put a lien on their property. And I'll tell you why they think that. The reason why they think that is because old loans that, that were sold before, Hero is a name, and Pace, they put a lien on your property. Now, here's the deal. We offer PACE. We just don't, we have the ability to offer PACE, but the majority of the loans, like the one that I just showed you here, it's not PACE. We offer Goodleap and Sunlight and Sonova. Let me give you some advice on these. Those are unsecured loans like a credit card. This is very important. There's no lien on your property. So if the customer says, hey, is it going to be a lien on my property? Is this going to prevent me from refinancing my house or from selling my house? You could refinance your house. You could sell your house. It's no problem, right? Now, if you have Hero or Pace and you want to refinance your house, you have to pay off the system first. If you want to sell your house, you have to pay off the system first. With the loans that we offer here, again, Good Leap, formerly known as Loan Pal, Sunlight, and Sonova, these are unsecured loans. You could refinance. You could, when, if you sell your house, you could transfer the loan to the new homeowner and they get it and they're good to go. That's very important. That, that is one of the misconceptions. So a lot of realtors don't like solar because they don't understand solar because they've sold somebody's house. Then all of a sudden they have solar, they have an old loan. And then they think, oh man, I remember the nightmare that that was. Client couldn't even sell their home because they had a solar system that had to be paid off first and I lost a deal. So they have a bitter taste in their mouth. So it's our job to let them know and inform them, hey, that's a PACE program, bro. That's old school. We don't offer that. We have unsecured loans. You could refinance, you could sell, transfer the, 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 the loan and the warranties and the benefits to the new homeowner. You don't even skip a beat. Fair enough? That's a misconception that you guys are going to have to overcome. So let them know that. Now, here's the deal. Sonova. Sonova is a pain in the butt to deal with. But the juice is worth the squeeze. We can offer leases and PPAs through Sonova. We could also offer loans, 25 year, 0.99 interest rate, okay? With a 650 FICO score. And it doesn't, two things, doesn't care about your DTI. Loan pound Sonova may come back and say, you have a good FICO score, but your debt to income ratio is too high. Therefore you don't qualify. Sonova doesn't care about that. Say so your DTI is high, but you got the FICO, here's a loan. Yep, that's right. Uh, power purchase agreement. It's kind of like a lease and I'll get into that a little bit later. So with Sonova, I've had deals decline. I've had deals decline with Good Leap. By the way, here's an order that goes in. Sonova, Good Leap, Sunlight. In, in easiest to qualify. Uh, yeah, so I always go Good Leap. Good Leap is my go-to. 
because it's easy to send them the docs. Sonova, you have to build the system out for them and the qualifications. It's, it's very clunky. I avoid it if I can. Okay. But if I don't have an option, then I'll go with that. But they only have 20, Sonova is only 25 years. So you got somebody who wants to pay off their system in less than 25 years, Sonova is not the place for you. 25 year, 199, 25 years, 099. Okay. So, but the, they don't care about DTI. So somebody's debt is too high. They get rejected with another bank. So no, we'll give them the loan. Another thing, it doesn't show up on your credit. So if you ever get a client that says, hey, listen, I am uh, going to buy some property next year or whatever. And they need their, their debt to income ratio not to be so high, not to have a $30,000 loan, $20,000, $50,000, whatever. Then Sonova is a great option because you put that on there, it doesn't even show up on the credit. Okay, that is another good talking point for realtors. Here's the thing, guys. One of the keys to success with power is a team building side. Are you obligated to build a team? No, nope. not by any means. Not at all. Do I recommend you build a team, even if it's little by little? Yes, I recommend you do. You could become a mentor in this group. And if you're good, you're responsible, you can close, you're a professional, you're going to get business. There's no question about it. We have a lot of business. Okay. However, you want to build that passive income is in the team building side. Well, approaching real estate agents with this, I let agents know, look, bro, we have loans that have, here's the bullet points, no lien on the property. Unsecure loans, right? So there's no lien on the property, 0 0.99 interest rate, and loans that don't even show up on your credit as debt, bro. I say that to realtors. Because these are all triggers, things that they don't know that exist in the solar industry. Really? Now I'm talking their language. Because sometimes they don't want to refer it to their clients because they think, oh, it's going to be, put a big lien on my property and I'm not going to be responsible for referring something like that to my clients. Later on, they're not going to want to sell with me when they want to sell in the future. No way. So what if I take those objections away ahead of time? Because I already know what their pain points are. You guys follow me so far? Do you guys follow me in the chat? Let me know. This is also a test to see if you guys are paying attention. I can't sell my house if I have solar. That is because of the reason of the lien, the, the fact that we have unsecured loans. There's no lien on the property. They could sell the house. Any of these three banks I mentioned, if I went from a $300 payment down to $150 payment and I let her sell my house to Bruce, why wouldn't Bruce take on a $150 payment instead of a three, three fifty, four hundred dollar payment five, 10 years from now? I just transfer it over, payment transfers, panel stay on the property, warranties transfer, 30 year bumper to bumper, everything transfers over. Now, you knowing this information and being excited about this information is going to get you to sell and recruit more because you go from being empowered to power being in you. You guys follow me? That's why if you look at the people that are selling the most, recruiting the most, and making the most money, they're all in. They know this stuff. They're saying it over and over. And they believe. Their belief is high. My belief is very high. I know that when I talk to realtors and when I talk to homeowners and anybody that I'm recruiting to my business, I know that I'm offering them something great for them and our customers. So that, that transfers over. Um, electric, a lot of people think they're going to have an electric bill plus a solar bill. A lot of homeowners and realtors, just people in general that don't know about solar, they sometimes think that they're going to have two bills. They think they're going to have their $200 solar bill and their $100 uh, excuse me, the $200 electric bill and their $100 solar bill. Believe it or not, people think that. You have to let them know, no, you're swapping your electric bill for your solar bill because you now become your own, mention their utility company, your own PG&E, your own Edison. However, you will have the connection fee to the grid, of course, right? We know that, you know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever the case may be. But a lot of times they think they're going to have both. So you, you want to make sure that they know that that's not the case. Yeah, go for it. Let's talk about some of the benefits of solar. Zero out-of-pocket solar. Here's 
my mindset when I got started. And this is something that helped me sell a lot. I looked at solar like an IQ test. I went and I said, wait a minute, I could take somebody's $200 bill, bring it down to $110 a month, 120, maybe even a hundred for zero out of pocket and lock in that payment. It'll never go up, increase the value of their home. Why the hell would a homeowner tell me no? Now, most people don't come in with that mindset. And let me tell you something, when you don't have that mindset, trust me when I tell you, the sale becomes harder. For those people that enter and look at this, it, let me give an example. Let's say you were, you, you guys remember Kirby vacuums? Anybody know Kirby vacuums? Okay. Let's say you came from selling Kirby vacuums. That's a hard sale, right? And you come into solar. You would have said, oh my God, what the heck was I doing? That was such a hard sale. This is such an easy sale. Just the mindset, forget the skills. Just the mindset of selling Kirby vacuums to selling solar is automatically good. That person is going to outproduce the other guy or girl that comes in here with a mindset of uh, solar, it's, it's, it's sales. It's a good thing that sales. Their posture, their belief is going to be completely different. One of the biggest things to building a big sales organization and to making a lot of sales is the mindset that you go into the sale with. It's, it's a big, big deal. So zero out of pocket solar. So here's some bullet points for homeowners. When you're talking to homeowners that you know, whether you're door knocking or whatever, these are some great bullet points for you to know, okay? Zero out of pocket solar. You can save 20 to 50% on your electric bill. Solar is an asset versus a liability. You have an asset on your home that you're paying off. You can lock in that electric bill. Not only do you save money, but we can lock that in. And I'm gonna show you what that means over the next 25 years. I'm gonna show you guys right now so you know. You increase the value of your home. There's a 26% federal tax credit right now. Here's what I tell people. Listen, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going solar. So if it's only a matter of when you're going solar, why not get the most amount of help from the government right now, which is 26%. If you're going to go anyway, especially in California, by 2045, every house in California must have sold. And they're trying to make that sooner. And then finally, energy independence. Okay. If you help them out with a backup battery, they could have energy independence as well. These are a couple of bullet points that I share with people right now. And it's also good for the environment, right? For those, some people believe in global warming. Some people don't. If you do and, you, and your prospect does, lean on that big time. It's a little bit of a controversial subject, so I don't spend a lot of time on it. But here's the thing about a salesperson. A, sales, a good salesperson is able to be a chameleon. Most people do business in black and white. The best do business in full color. They can adjust. They can see who they're in. The, I have a training. And a matter of fact, one of the episodes on my podcast on the four personality types. Okay, I recommend you watch that episode. There's people that are driven by the environment and helping other people. Selfless. That's a yellow personality. The red personality is about the money. Show me the money in the business and show me how much money I'm going to save. Bottom line is, what are the dollars and cents? The blue person loves to have fun and the green person is super analytical. Just by a two-minute conversation with somebody, you can find out their personality type. And if I know that they're an analytical person, I'm going to hit them with the analytics, right? If I know they're a bottom line person, how much money am I saving? Then I'm going to hit them with that. But this is a different subject, right? But anyways, uh, it's good for the environment. Let's keep moving. Imagine this. By the way, this here, I already have in a video on YouTube recorded presentation. You can watch it, okay? I, this is one of the first videos I did. This is actually a slide I did when I barely started. Imagine it's 1999 and you were offered a gas card to lock in your gas prices and 1999's gas prices in California. That'd be $1.17. Gas prices in 2019 hit 2.23, 2 I mean, 323, right? That's about what they're at right now, probably a little bit more, right? Actually, now they're probably more. Yeah. I don't know why, but over the last year, since November, things have gone up drastically. I don't know why. I'm just saying, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm just telling you what I've noticed. <laughs> Lumber's gone up. Everything's gone up, man. Anyway, if you compare the 1999's prices to last 2019's prices, 
a gallon of gas would have gone from $60. You would have been able to pump your gas for $21 instead of 60 to 70 bucks. Had you been able to lock in the prices at 1999 price? How many of you think that'd be pretty cool? We can't do that with gas. But you know what you could do that with? Electricity. So when we take, right now, Edison people are paying 27, 28 cents a kilowatt hour right now. We could take it down to 16, 15, 13 cents a kilowatt hour and lock them in. That's essentially what we're doing. I literally give this example to a homeowner. Even when I knock on their door, if I see that I've got some interest, you know, I hit them with a couple of bullet points. I hit them with a couple of things. The, the key is I want to get a piece of information, which is that bill. You guys know the system. I keep it simple. Get the interest, get the bill, get the appointment. If you master that, you can be good. Get the interest of the homeowner, get their bill and get the appointment. And then the mentor is going to help you close the sale. Then you're going to learn a lot while you're attending trainings. You're going to get good, get good. Because one of the things that stops people from success, not only in this business, but in any business is paralysis by analysis. They want to know everything before they do anything. Don't do that. Don't do that. Look, everybody's different. I'm more, I'm the red personality. I'm the type of dude that fire then aim. What are we firing at? Right? And so, but I, I, I practice a lot. I train a lot during the time. But I remember when I barely started, I said, let me learn some of these bullet points, make some flyers. And I went out and I got a list of new homeowners and I started visiting new homeowners. And I said, I'm going to go fumble a bunch. I'm going to just fumble, fumble, fumble. Then I'm going to fumble less. Then I'm hardly going to fumble. But I'm going to get some deals while I'm fumbling. Right? I'm only a year, less than a year and a half in the industry. But out of 6,000 people, I'm rated number one in the company. I don't say that to, to, to try to brag. I say that because I didn't overanalyze everything. And I have the best team in the entire company. That's the only reason why I'm number one. Not because of my merits. But you know what I did focus on? I focused on recruiting a lot of people, getting to mentor while recruiting. And I, I recruited up. I recruited people that are better than me. Does that make sense? Sponsor up. That's what I did. And I was a sponsor monster. I mean, I just, I sponsored a bunch of people. I recruited a bunch of people. Andrew, I was after Andrew for months. Almost a year, huh, Andrew? Almost a year after this dude. Right? Just boom, 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 nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And I didn't let my foot off the gas. Most people suffer from something called temporarily motivation. Temporary motivation. They, they'll listen to a trainer right now. They're going to be fired up for the next week or two or a couple of days. And they're going to lose that motivation. I would highly encourage you, if you don't invest your time here, invest in some hinges. Because we're going to blow the doors off the hinges with power. Power, wait, sell you a little bit of vision right now. Which is, by the way, one of the keys to building a big business. You don't, we don't just sell solar. You know what I sell? I sell more than solar. I sell hope and opportunity to my team. If I sell enough hope and opportunity and vision to my team, the team gets bigger, most, more solar gets sold, bigger overrides for everybody. See how that works? It, most people, just the sales guys focus on linear sales. Selling solar, making a great commission. That's cool. If you want to do that the rest of your life. I don't. I'm 38. By 40, I want to have the option to ride off into the sunset. Right? How many people want to do that? I'm going to focus this last part of the year on person, people development, team development, system development. This month, I'm not even going to really do that many sales. Right? I'm going to focus on this kind of stuff. You guys get it? So, damn, I lost my train of thought, but I'll get back to it. All right, let's keep it moving. Imagine doing this. Now let's get into some of these numbers. Gloria has been paying $200 a bill and decides to go solar. $200 to her electric company on average. By the way, this is, there's a lot of new people. When we look at somebody's bill, we want to figure out what their average monthly payment is for the year. So somebody paid throughout the last 12 months a total of $1,200 for the last 12 months. What was their average monthly payment? Mm -hmm. That's the number we're looking at, the average. Don't make the rookie mistake of looking at their last bill. Oh, here's what they're paying on month on average. No, no, no. We want to see what their average bill is, right? For those of you guys that have already sold solar, this sounds very like, obvious to you. 
but there's new people here that is not very obvious to. So we have to have that balance in this training where we really make it very simple. That's why we want to look at the bill the last 12 months. Okay. Her average bill is 200 bucks a month. Okay. She takes her bill down to 139 going solar with zero out of pocket. So she's saving 61 bucks a month, which is 732 a year. Fair enough. But the question is, is it only 732 or is it more? Okay. Well, see, in 2020, her payment was 200 bucks a month. Notice this is 2020 because I did this last year. But if it only goes up 4 to 6% per year in 2021, it'll be roughly an average of 210. Okay. In 2022, 2025. And over the years, if it only goes up 5% a year on average, in 2045, she's going to be paying 711. See, so we don't just look at what's happening now. We look at what's happening later, and the proposal shows how to do that. So in reality, she wasn't saving that much. So here's her savings over the course of this time. Per year. Right? Excess money without going solar, if it was only a 5% increase over the course of, of 25 years, if it was only 5% per year, she would have paid an additional 80,000 bucks over the next 25 years. If it only went up 5%, but it doesn't go up 5%, it's going, this year's loan is going up 10%. You guys see, see the power in that? See, but this information allows us to have that belief system to have that belief system in what we're selling. But see, it's hard to have a backbone when you're prospecting and when you're presenting and when you're recruiting if you don't know this stuff. We're make, if you look at the training that Charles has done on the impact to the, to the planet that we are creating, that in itself is going to light up a, a fire under, especially the yellows. The yellows are the environmentally conscious people. Even me as a red, it puts light to fire under my butt. But this here really shows people, this is, not, this is not what, I'm not saving you $700 a year. That's how much I'm saving you year one. Year two, saving you almost 900. And year three, blah, blah, blah. You could literally do this with every customer once you learn how to do this. You could, if you want to take that extra time and show them what they're going to really be saving, it'll blow their mind. Let's keep it moving. Now what? Get a free solar quote. What do I need? I need your, obviously, we have their interest at this point. Remember, interest, bill, appointment. Get the electric bill. And then get a time and day to show them the benefits of solar. To show them their solar savings report. That's one of the things that when I was new, I had never sold solar. They're like, JC, how'd you sell solar? So much solar. How'd you build such a big team? Number one, I wasn't in power. I made power be a part of me. Power was in me. That's the difference. There's people that are in power and people that power is in them, meaning they own it. I act as if I own the company. I act as if me and my team's production is going to keep the doors open. Like, take ownership of it. Here's one of the best advice I could give you. If you want to rock this thing, knock it out of the park. Make a career choice that this is what you're going to do. And that doesn't mean you have to be full-time. That doesn't mean you have to be full-time. You can start part-time, but make a decision. Here's why. I come from the network marketing background, great industry, made a lot of money, a lot of connects. I grew a bunch. And I said, you know what? I don't want to be a quote-unquote network marketer. I'm going into the solar industry full force, and I'm going to have thousands of people know without a shadow of a doubt that I am in the solar business and that is my career path. And I went and I owned it from the activities I did daily to the way I promoted myself on social media. Social media, you guys know David Perez? David Perez is crushing it. How do you think I recruited him? Social media. He looked at my social media for six months. He says, JC, for six months, I saw you promote solar. And at first I was like, ah, let's see how it goes. 
after six months, he says, I realized you were all in and I saw your results. And he hit me up. Now he's top 10 in Commerners last month. Oh, David Press, didn't he close a deal for you? Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. He closed another deal uh, like on Friday for another one of my guys. Yeah. How are you going to attract those people? Let me tell you how you attract those people. R write this down. People will rarely follow a leader with a smaller vision than their own. If you have a smaller vision than the people you're trying to recruit, they're not going to follow. It's possible, but it's very, very hard that that'll happen. So, but if they see that you are all in, you are committed, your belief system is there, you're consistent, you're going to start to, people are looking at you, man. If you're not on social media, I respect it. But if you're not on social media, just for no, no particular important reason, I would recommend get on social media. It's a great business card. I recruited Luis Perez. I, rec I personally recruited Luis. Social media. Marvin, social media. What, how many deals have you done already, Marvin? Six. New to solar. <laughs> right? B, how many, social media, right? Now, I did meet him through a friend, but we're friends on social media. He saw me, right? The thing is, man, it's such a big deal. But, but when you, you know that I'm Mr. Power, I own it. I own it. Like, I want everybody to know I'm Mr. Power. Because I'm not playing with this. Because, look, let me put things into perspective, guys. Well, at least I think it will. I always say this. And, and, and you guys are going to remember these words. And I've said them a lot of times. We are the EXP Realty of the solar industry. EXP Realty is a billion dollar real estate company. It is the only real estate company in the world that has real estate agents making a million a month passive income without selling real estate. Their overhead is $89 a month. They have a guy that made last month 900 and something thousand dollars off the overrides of his team. And his overhead is $89 a month for the membership fee. Ours is 49. They started that model in 2013. They went public in 2013. They're, they became a billion dollar company last year. They gave people free stock options the way that our company does. They have, so what Power did in 2019, they, Jonathan Budd saw their success. And he said, we need to do what they're doing, but in solar. We're going to copy what they're doing identical. It's okay to be a copy guy as long as you copy the right cat. So they literally took what they did. They copied and pasted it. But instead of real estate, solar. What do you think is easier to sell, solar or real estate? Solar. Yeah, take it from somebody who's done both. Solar is a lot easier. Now they got a guy. There's some guy that I know that was in my sales organization in the MLM company in 2014. 2014, Texas, San Antonio left to exp right now that dude's worth over 200 million dollars with exp he earned a bunch of free stock and bought a bunch of free stock and he makes almost half a million dollars a month he was in my sales organization i was in san antonio at the double tree hotel and i recruited him for one of my guys doug now that dude's worth 200 million with them but see there's eight years in the industry with this model we're less than two that's why I'm telling you, this is a big play. Now, if you look at the biggest renewable energy companies out there versus the biggest real estate companies, renewable energy companies are worth way more. Richest man in the world is in the renewable energy industry. This industry for the next 10, 20 years is the gold rush. So we know that we're in the right industry. Now, are we in the right company? Hey, 2020, the only company on the Inc. 5000 list, number 938. 2021, number 61. In one year, we went from 938 to number 61 in one year. And we're the only solar company on that list. So we have the right industry and we have the right company. So my suggestion would be, don't dabble. Do this part-time. If that's what you're doing, that's cool. But go and be consistent. Remember, there's two reasons why people don't achieve what they want. They're not doing something right or they're not doing something often enough. It's the bottom line. 
you're either not doing something right or you're not doing something often enough. You need that combination. You could go door knock with a perfect script once a week and you're not going to be successful, right? Or, or, or you could go door knock seven days a week bad with a terrible script and you didn't put deodorant on or comb your hair or brush your teeth and you're not going to be successful either. So you need to do the right thing consistently and persistently over an extended period of time. People ask, JC, but what did you do? So I prospected and I recruited. No, no, but, but really, what did you do? I prospected every day. And I recruited every day and I rested one time a week. The way God rests one time a week, right? Made the world in six days, rested one day. That's what I did. That's my philosophy. I think that's a good philosophy to follow. So I rest one day, I work six. And I master the mundane. I just do the same thing over and over. I say the same presentation to every homeowner. When I recruit people, I use the same videos. I answer the same questions in the same way. The difference is I just don't stop doing it because here's one thing that's consistent. Inconsistency. The majority of the words are inconsistent. Go to the gym on January 1st or 2nd. See how many people there is there. Go back two and a half months later. They're gone. All the posers are gone. Right? Same thing with this business. People get excited, temporarily excited. I'm gonna, I'm up, JC, I'm gonna crush it. Just go do it, bro. Don't tell me. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Let's just go do it. Does that make sense, guys? All right, let's keep it moving. Sorry, guys, I get carried away. Ha, huh, power June promotion. That was last last year. Okay, let's keep it moving here. Okay, good. So that's the end of that. I've got some notes here. So we talked about the bullet points to peaking the interest, right? Simple. What if I could cut your bill in half, right? With zero out of pocket, lock in that payment, right? So we got into those. I'm not going to get into those. I want to talk about, people ask me often, what was, what did I do? So let's get into what I did. First thing that I did when I got started with power, I got started, I made a list of everybody that I know. And I started calling that list. And I'm going to give you the script that I use to call that list. It's a very simple one. You guys hear me say this very often because it's so incredibly crucial. The philosophy is you got to get 200 people immediately to know that you're a solar professional. Notice that I said to know that you're a solar professional, a committed solar professional at that. Not to know that you sell solar. Like they know beyond the shadow of a doubt, you are a solar professional, minimum 200 people ASA. So I make a list of everybody, homeowners or not, doesn't matter. Cause I could be talking to a 19 year old guy, but his parents are homeowners. He might not be, but his parents are. Or his uncle just bought a house and was talking about solar. I don't know. All I could control is two things. My attitudes, my attitude and my actions. I can't control if I talk to Bruce, if he may be interested in the business or solar, but what I could control is talking to him and the attitude that I have when I'm going into the day, right? So make a list of two, I made a list of minimum 200 people and I started calling them to let them know I was in solar industry. And the call went something like this. After some small talk, I would say, hold on, let me drink some water. After some small talk, I would say, hey, Bruce, listen, the reason why I'm calling you, bro, is because I just got started in the solar industry. I'm very excited about what I'm doing. And this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 10 to 20 years. The reason why I want you to know, Bruce, is in case you know of anybody that either has questions about solar or anybody that may be interested about in solar, I would appreciate if you'd keep me in mind. Fair enough. Who could do that? Now, here's the deal, though. I've talked to people that have been in this business for six months, a year. They haven't done that. Because they think, ah, it's not that important. But then here's what happens sometimes. A family member, a friend ends up buying solar all because they didn't know that this person did solar. Now, if Bruce, when I say that to him, he gives me anything positive, I'm going to offer him the ambassador program. If I know that he's a homeowner, I'm going to ask him for the bill. By the way, have you gone solar yet, Bruce? I assume that they're either gone solar or they're going to go solar. By the way, Bruce, 
have you gone solar yet? Bruce says, no, no, I actually haven't. And here's what I would say to him. I'll say, well, listen, man, I have to do about 10 solar proposal designs in the next week. If you send me a, a utility bill, it could be a picture, it could be an email, I could have a proposal, a solar savings report in your inbox in the next 24 hours. And you'd be helping me out with my training, bro. Could you help me out with that, bro? No obligation, right? Just at least you'll know what the benefits of solar are. Does that sound fair enough? See that? I'm simply asking. I'm keeping it simple. Now, people, people that are not now, granted, there's new homeowner training, there's door knocking training. We're, we're we've done all of that. We keep doing all of that, especially once we fight, get get the office upstairs. Those are trains going to be happening every single week. Right now, though, right now, though, when we're doing this, you imagine if you've got ten people on your team that are calling two hundred people and letting them know that they're in the solar industry. You don't think some leads are going to come from that? Yes, that's why the key is get to mentor. Listen, man, let me let me say something bold to you here. If you get to mentor on this team and you are, first of all, you can close, right? Which, by the way, we have a homeowner presentation. Nate, you've seen me do it a few times and you've seen these guys do it. We use the same homeowner presentation, right? Me, Marvin, I use the same homeowner presentation every time. It's about 11 or 12 slides. Then I go into the proposal and ask the closing questions. Anybody can do it. It's not rocket science to sell solar, man. It's not. If you're professional, you can close and you are reliable. There's no reason why you can't make a minimum of $100,000 per year with our team as a mentor. Now, if you're more ambitious and you're one of the better ones as requested even more, then we're talking about multiple six figures a year from home. I'm telling you, man, because we've got a juggernaut of a team that we're building that is only increasing. Now that things are a little bit opening up more and we're getting this office over here, we're going to do lunch and learns here. We're going to do a weekly opportunity meetings there where people are going to bring real estate agents, loan officers, tax people, other solar pros. And we're going to, mat if you think what we've done right now is big, that's nothing, man. We literally almost slow down recruiting. I've got people that are hitting me up to because they already saw the videos and I haven't called them back yet because we got to take care of our customers first and ourselves. We literally, that's a problem. That's why I told Isela, I'm not even going to be taking that many appointments right now because I've got so many people that we've got to recruit and we've got to train and we got to build the systems out for the people that want to be part-time, the people that want to be you know, full-time and the people that want big-time income. We have to have the trainings and the systems in place for these three people. My focus over the next two months is going to be that. Yeah, that's the focus. So the first thing I did is made that list and I started calling everybody. That got me sales. That got me recruits. The next thing I did, personally, I went and I visited the new homeowner list. The new homeowner list, I have a training on this. I believe that with the new homeowner list, 20 to 25 hours per week, you can make one to three sales per month, even if you're new. Listen to what I just said. 20 to 25 hours a week with the new homeowner list, you can make one to three sales per month. Now, if the average commission is over 7,000 bucks, you could do the math on how much money that is. But I knew I have to knock out three mentor sales to get to mentor. So what I did during the day, I would call and make my recruiting sales. I have, we have plenty of videos on recruiting. I would call people, uh, you know, to recruit them and I have the video presentations I will send to them then I will call them afterwards to answer their questions on the presentation on the business opportunity then in the evening from about four to eight I was visiting new homeowners and here was my tools polo shirt business card and a flyer that's it I still have all of those tools I just went and I got some existing polo shirts of mine, took them to an embroidery place down the street, matter of fact, Lakewood in Florence. And I said, I want you to slap this logo on this shirt. And they did it. Came back the next day, got me three shirts. And I had already ordered my business cards and flyers, picked those up. And I have the system. Where do you find the homeowners? I found homeowners three months to two years. That's the age frame. Three months or two years. Homeowners with a pool. 
and I picked about three cities, neighboring cities. And I went and visited those. And guess what? There's always new homeowners. <laughs> Here's the thing. Your biggest resource is your resourcefulness. You know, David, he went door knocking. That's what he knows. I know door knocking too, but I like new homeowner list better. David started door knocking. He got to mentor. As soon as he decided, he went one day, closed two same day deals in one day. Knocked the door, got the bill. Knocked another door, got the bill. The same day, goes back later with a proposal, closes both deals. Made about 15 Gs in one day. How much did it cost him? A couple of hours of his time? Some business cards, maybe? Where else can you make that kind of money? We talked about earlier real estate versus solar. In real estate, you're looking for homeowners that want to buy or sell, right? Simple. Here, you're looking for homeowners with a bill. In real estate, you need a real estate license, state exam. Here, you just need a passive fingerprint. Just don't be a criminal. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Even if you're a criminal, you can still do the business. Use me as a mentor, right? Use one of our mentors. You're good. You know what I'm saying? You can get off the pin. Be yoked. Just got off the pin, bro. And you just assign a mentor, man. Close those deals, right? Isn't that cool? Just go get, and then guess what you could do? You could go out there, still build a team and make the, the big play is that override income, the stock options. That's a bigger play. The mentor program is awesome. You make great money. I recommend get the mentor, close mentor deals, some, and then invest at least 10% of your money back into your business. At least 10% of your money invested back into your business. How many people plan to make a lot of money? Guess what? You, you're going to need to pay taxes on that money. But some of that money, you're going to need those tax write-offs. Invest half of your, excuse me, 10% of your money back into your business. Whether that's ads or whatever the case may be, start building your team. Start building your team. Start recruiting people. And then plug them into the training. I'm going to tell you this much. Put your head down for three years. Do not pick your head up for three years. Build this business for the next three years. You won't have to worry about money again. But got to be, it's an apple a day, not seven apples on Sunday that keeps the doctor away, right? That's why, th th that's what, but now you, you, you could see, look, I told people in the beginning of the year, I said, you see this guy? He just started. He's going to go smoke a bunch of people that have already been here. Sure enough, that happened. Because a lot of people get started. They get excited, but then they don't move forward with the, with the business. They, you know, again, temporary motivation. So anyways, I did, the, did my list, called everybody. I started visiting new homeowners. And then I also went out there and I um, uh, did the new homeowner list and I started recruiting people. Who did I recruit? People that I know, contacted real estate agents, roofers, tax people, loan officers, people like that. One of the things that I would advise for those of you guys that really want to make it work is networking groups like BNI. Some of our most successful mentors are part of BNI. How many people here do not know the way BNI works? By show of hands. Okay, good. Every, oh, okay. So here's the way BNI works. It's a group of professionals that meet once a week, whether in person or via Zoom. Right now it's mainly via Zoom, so it's easier. Same day, same time every week. There's only one solar pro it's only one mortgage pro only one real estate pro, only one plumber blah 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 they meet up every week to refer each other business and to learn about each other's business and there's only one so like if they have a solar pro they won't even accept it. oh we already got a solar pro but you have to join another chapter it's called business networking international biggest networking group in the world they're worldwide you could they're about an hour and a half meetings meet up once a week and then they also encourage you to meet up once a week and meet with one or two people throughout the week to each other learn about each other's business. So wouldn't it be make sense to meet up with the roofer of the group, with the real estate of, agent of the group, with the loan officer, et cetera, et cetera, people that have homeowners. So you guys meet up for lunch or for a coffee. Tell me about your business. Let me tell you about my business. Let's see how we can help each other out. I think that's pretty cool. Yes. Because you... 
the, the mindset has to be the long-term play mindset. I'm in the long game, not the short game, right? So I'm in the long game. See, where's my charger? I want to charge. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions so far? Hey, JC. Yes. Uh, just want, wanted to see uh, where the videos were, were going to be at. And is uh, if this is going to be recorded, uh, where do you like post it? Great. I'm going to send you over. Who's this, by the way? Uh, this is Eddie. Eddie Wong. Oh, cool. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. So I'll make sure that we send. Uh, can you make a note of that, uh, please? Isela? For Eddie, let's send them. And I'm going to also make sure that you guys are on the WhatsApp groups. And if you're on Facebook, on the Facebook groups. Because a lot of these get shared on there. And it'll be a great way. So, Eddie, if you're not on the WhatsApp group, make sure that you remind me later and I'll add you. Okay, cool. Yep. And remind me later. I'll Appreciate send you the video. Yep. Sounds Excellent. good. Thank you. No problem. I, ha I have a train on the new homeowner list. The new homeowner list is an incredible list. It's an incredible way to go out there and get business. Let me give an example. I visit a new homeowner. Got my polo, business cards, and a fly. During the week from 4 to 8, I would visit about 15 to 22 homes, approximately. Let's, let's call it 20. Saturdays, I would go from like nine to six, right? Um, and Saturdays, the goal was to visit over 40 homes, 40, 45, 50 on a good day. And here's all I would say. I would knock on the door. They open the door and I say, how you doing? My name is JC. Just want to drop this off for you, which is my flyer. And I give them the flyer. Okay, great. And I got a business card. I'm going to give them to as well, but I'm going to give it to them a couple seconds later on purpose. I'll tell you why right now. So I hand them the flyer. I say, yeah, I'm the solar guy in the area. I, I help a lot of your neighbors around here go solar. By the way, congratu congratulations on your new home. It's beautiful. They say, oh, thank you. By the way, here's my card. So I get them to reach out again and grab my card. I say, and by the way, have you guys ever considered solar? They're either going to say yes or they're going to say no. And then I start a dialogue. If they say, oh, no, or, you know, we already have solar. Or, you know what? I have sometimes people tell me, oh, we're already working on getting solar with another company. Hey, you know what? Congratulations on that. You're one of the smart ones in the area because you're going solar. Just make sure that they're giving you a 0% interest loan and 30-year warranties on your roof parts and labor, okay? Now I put doubt in their mind because they're not getting a 0% loan from somewhere else. And they're not getting 30-year warranties from somewhere else. You follow me? Then they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, 0% loan? They give me a 199, 299, 399 loan or those warranties. They're not giving me those warranties. Well, Mr. Homer, did you know that your contract that you signed specifically says for you to get more than one proposal? Did you get more than one proposal? Well, no, I didn't. Well, that's what your contract says. If you like, I could have a proposal for you later on today. I should get a picture of your electric. Or do you have that other proposal from another company? Does that make sense? But guess what? You're not going to go out there and meet these people unless you go out there and meet these people. <laughs> Is that right? Bottom line, you want to make more money? Introduce yourself to more strangers. It's a bottom line. You're going to be bad at first. Every master was once a disaster. Right? You got to go out there and fail on your face, man. Who could do that? Can you do that with 20 people a day, bro? Yeah. And guess what? Money. It's easy to make money. You know why? You know what our resources are in this business? And there's more people being born than money's being printed. Actually, with the pandemic, that might not be the case, right? With the stimulus money, that might not be the case. But before the stimulus money, there was more money being printed, more, more people being born than money being printed. Our resources, people. Now, if you don't mind, what's the worst that's going to happen? Bro, what are you doing, man? Get out of my house. They're going to close the door. What's the worst is going to happen to you, man? Or maybe a dog bites you, right? Well, that's the worst going to happen. <laughs> right. That's the worst going to happen to you, man. But you'll be all right. And Saturdays, I would visit like 40 people, 45 people. I only did that. I'm going to drop a bomb on you guys. I did that for like two months and three weeks, less than three months. Because during those three months, I was building a team. It took me two months and three weeks to become a mentor. By the time I became a mentor, I have 40 people, 35 to 40 people on my team. They say, you're a mentor now, JC? Yeah. 
let me assign you leads. Now, I have not had time to go prospect anymore for the last year, over a year. Matter of fact, here's a bomb I'm going to drop on you. If I go prospect right now, I'm being selfish to my team. Because I could go prospect to find a personal deal, or I could help two, three guys on my team close a deal today. Isn't that more selfless? Yeah. I could go find my own deal, make seven to 10,000 bucks on a deal, or I can make three to four grand for me and another person. And I can help two, three people do that instead of spending four hours prospecting. But see, that's not where my business was a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, there was one. I remember I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, there's one. No deals, no leads, no team. But everything is created twice. First in the mind, then in the physical. And I said, are we, we're the happiest when we're producing, when we're building, we're the happiest. Yesterday, my, my wife bought a pantry. She's always buying shit and I got to build it, right? Any, any man can relate to that? Yeah. So of course, if shit shows up, like, oh, I guess I got to build this shit too, huh? So anyways, it shows up. I say, fine, let me get started. It's my day off. So I build the pantry. And I start feeling good as I'm putting it together. It's all these pieces and I got the instructions. Shit, man. And I'm not looking forward to it initially, but afterwards, I like it. Feels good. You see it come together, right? See it come together. Same thing with the business, man. Sense of accomplishment. So you might be new and look at your back office. Maybe you have one lead, two leads, no leads, no team. But you got to build it up here before you can build it in the physical. This very room, this building, these chairs, these tables were first built on somebody's mind, then in the physical. You got to visualize. Here's the thing. Losers... Losers replay their past failures and setbacks. Winners pre-play their future success and wins. See that? You have to visualize this thing. So I remember when I was new, there was nothing in my back office. And I said, this is going to change quickly. Watch in a year how many people are going to be on my team. How many sales I would have made. All those sales in the last, since June till now, I've helped about 120 people go sold pretty good right where are all those people going to come from lewis here's the answer none of my business where are those people going to come from is none of my business they're going to come from wherever they're at right now that's the answer where they come where's all those big ass team going to come from it's none of my business they're going to come from where they're at right now what is my business is my actions and my attitudes and if i have the right attitude i'm going to be consistent with my actions right that's what matters. You think I had an idea where Nate was going to come from? No. Nate, how many deals you already closed? Three. And you've been in how long? Almost a month. I didn't know him two months ago. It's none of my business where he's going to come from. As long as he shows up. Right? If you build it, they'll come. If you build your business, you build yourself, you attend training, they're going to come. Just don't let your foot off the gas because that's what 95% of the world do. They get temporarily motivated. They start building and they let their foot off the gas and it's you lose momentum. Here's the thing about momentum. Imagine momentum like this. You got a 1970 Cadillac. You know, those long, heavy Cadillacs and you're pushing and then you're pushing as heavy as hell and it's a little uphill. But so you can imagine super heavy, hard, right? And you're pushing, pushing, but finally you get this car to move a little. But you know, if you stop, all that was for nothing. You got to start over, right? So you don't stop. You keep pushing. Eventually, you could push that Cadillac with a finger, right? Why? Because of momentum. Same thing with the business. But a lot of people don't realize you built up some momentum, not only in your business, in your prospects, in your confidence. In your subconscious, and you let go of the gas, all of a sudden you got to start all over again. Shit is tough. Man. It's like almost a sin to lose momentum in this business. Momentum is the hardest thing to gain and the easiest thing to lose. I want you to remember that. Hardest thing to gain, easiest thing to lose. So my recommendation is build it. If I stop right now, you think Lewis is going to stop? Robert Hollis, right? Marvin, V, all these people, Gerardo, Andrew. These guys ain't stopping. They're going. You know why? Because they have the same opportunity that I do. I don't make more money than none of you guys. If we sell an identical system, we make the same money. 
I don't get paid six levels and you get paid five. We both get paid six levels. I could earn the same stock options that you could earn. That's why this model works in a traditional dealer model. That doesn't work that way. If, if the owner recruited me and I recruited you, you're going to make less than I do on the set. You have less leverage to build a team than I do. That's why it's so important that you understand this. So you go out there and build. I recruit solar pros. We recruited a, a solar pro today. Last month, we recruited like solar pros like a mud. A lot of them. That right, Andrew? Right? Because they see that we have an opportunity that doesn't exist out there. So my recommendation is take that opportunity and, and start building. All right. Let's see. We talked about the bullet points. Okay. Any, right now, I want to go and answer some questions. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? And, uh, uh, here on the chat as well, let me know if you guys have any questions. We're almost finishing up. Yes. Great question. Question was, where do I get the homeowner list? Redfin.com or Zillow, but I like Redfin. Redfin, you could download a PDF of it. And I have a video, I'll send it to you. Anybody that wants it, I'll send it to you. It's on the YouTube channel. I show you the app that I use. It's called Roadrunner. For those of you guys that want to know, the app is called Roadrunner. It's free for like a week or a month, and then it's 10 bucks a month. Road Warrior, my bad. Yeah, Road Warrior. I was watching cartoons earlier. <laughs> so Road Warrior is an app. That's right. 10 bucks a month. You download the list. So you put in, let's say, for example, Pico Rivera, California. And you put the dates. I go three months to two years. I don't go to recent, recent, because sometimes they're not moved in yet or they're remodeling. So then you're going to visit a bunch of homes that's not ready for it. So that's why I start at three months. Trust me, I've mastered this all the way to two years. You could go three years. It's fine. I, I just go to two years. And I put only pools with a home because they have a bigger bill. They're more receptive. See that? So now I download this list and I put three neighboring cities. So when I put these three neighboring cities, let's say it's Pico Rivera, Downey, and Santa Fe Springs. Sometimes you cross the street, you're in another city. So now it lets you. So, so when I do that, and I got a list of like 200 homes. A minute later, I'm in another house. Sometimes it's like five houses down, the other houses there, right? And I just go with that script, bro. And then the app, you, you, like let's say it's the next house, you click open the GPS. Opens the GPS, takes you there. Then you go to the, once you visit it, you go to there and you can put notes. Not interested. Not home. I put like, you know, NI means not interested, right? Not home is NH, right? Stuff like, or DC, don't come back, DCB. Right. Let's say they were just, you know, whatever, rude or whatever the case is. Don't come back. Right. And so when I go the following day, I could see that it says don't come back. I can see it says not interested. So I just, OK, skip, skip, skip. OK, this next one, nobody was home. That's where I'm going next. So I'm narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. Then before you know it, man, like you got a bunch of people that already, you know, a couple of people send you some bills. You got a couple of people said that they're interested. They're going to get you a bill. So now they're on your follow up list. And you just keep working with that list, man. And it's just a consistent same thing. Your first month, it's going to be a learning month. You have to know that ahead of time. You're not going to knock it out the park the first month. But let me tell you something. You go four or five days a month for your first month, you're going to crush it. By, by your second month, you got momentum. You've already identified. You already took out a lot of the not interested ones. You're only going to prime ones. Then, and guess what? Leave a flyer behind. I. Out of those two and a half months, a little over two and a half months, I left flyers behind. I got two. One of the sales that I remember the most, I closed in December from a flyer I left in July. Sold the guy solar with a $27,000 uh, roof. From a flyer I left on his porch, dude. You just never know, man. Right? But it's that if I used to do the new homeowner list with ADT. Trust me, the new homeowner list works. I, I've done, people in, in home security do this, done this for many years. It works. And nobody taught me in power. Nobody says, you do the homeowner, just use the, the system and the tools. It, nobody had it. I say, well, shit, I'll just make it up. How hard can it be? So I just kind of, and I created a little system. It's a very simple, you know, it's like 30 seconds of talking in the door and you're handing them a flyer and a business card. Man. And if you're a likable person, makes it even easier, man. You know what I mean? 
Now, if you look like a thug, it might be a little tougher. Ladies, it's easier for ladies. It's a little more receptive, you know? All right. Any any other questions? Yeah. As long as homes that haven't been built is a question. Yes, we can. You need the plans of the homes and uh, the, the latitude and longitude, which you can get on Google. If you go to latlongs.net, put the address and it'll give you, at what well, if it's not built yet, it might not be there yet, but for homes without a bill, let's say, let's say you got a home that's built, but it's not, it's new. So it's not showing yet uh, online. You need the lat and long, the latitude and longitude, you can get that on Google. And then if you can get pictures of the house, upload them to, to the assets, and then they'll be able to design the system for you. And that's where your mental works with you too. Yeah. Yeah. See, those those connect. That's why BNI, man. Now, one thing about BNI, you want to have that long term vision with BNI. You're not going to get in there your first month or two and start getting deals. They need to get to know you. So, like, does he show up to the meetings on time? Is he a professional? Is he consistent? You know what I mean? Because it, that's their hard earned clients. Imagine a real estate agent going to refer his business to somebody that's not a professional. That, that'd be bad for his business. So, you know, you have to build that relationship with those people. But Jonathan Brunasso, Close like 10 deals a year from BNI. He meets up with them once a, once a week. Do the math. Hour and a half a week, close about 10 deals per year. Makes about $70,000, $80,000 a year from that meeting. Now, granted, he's been there, you know what I'm saying? Like um, a couple of years now, two, three years. But you guys think that's a good investment? And the connections. You know, the truth is that he doesn't really know how many deals he closed. And he closes that many deals from the referrals that come there. But all the people that he's met because of those people outside, that, that Brunasso, probably easily 1,500 to 2,000 people know beyond the shadow of that, that, that dude's in Solar. Once you get there, that dude don't need no mentor deal. That dude can make quarter million a year minimum just off of referrals. Now, when you couple that with power and the mentor program and all that stuff, that, he's probably going to make a million this year. Any other questions? Hey, JC, I have a question. Um, I was told something about uh, in-person trainings, uh, weekly in-person trainings. I think you mentioned something about that a little bit earlier. I wanted to know when those will start. They, they started right now. We're here in person. Okay, never mind. Just kidding. Yeah, no, no, but we're, we're doing these meetings, though. We're doing these meetings every week. And by the way, who is this? Is this, um... this is Mariana. Oh, Mariana, good. So we're going to start doing these every week. Once we finalize the office, right? Because right now we're in the verge of getting a new office, which we're at the training room of the new office. We should finalize that office this month. We're waiting for the tenants to leave. So we're going to start doing those trainings. It's probably going to be Monday. Monday's consistently, and we're going to do additional trainings afterwards, but we're going to be at the office all the time. So um, I'm going to coordinate one for next week again, though. So next week, all, all of you guys know we're going to do another training. It's going to be on a different subject, okay, in Q&A. And make sure you guys prep your questions as well. Come here prepared throughout the week, and, and throughout talking to people, you're going to have questions. So make sure that you guys come out here. So so anyways, um, next week, make sure that you uh, come out. Because right now, we've got like 20 people here in the conference room. All right. I'm sorry, Marvin. You, you had a question? Sweet. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. So he's asking about the formula. What if you don't have a bill? Does anybody know that formula? Sure. Some people here know. Hmm? So you take the square footage and you're going to multiply it by either four, five, or six. Depends on the family. For example, he's asking how to calculate a bill, a usage of a customer without a bill. So the way that you do that is you take the square footage and you're going to multiply that by either four, five, or six. What determines that, that number? you ask them a couple questions. So for example, number four is like bare minimum. It's a family that's not really home. They hardly use the electricity. Maybe it's a husband and wife. 
both work outside of the house. They get home, watch Netflix and have dinner and go to sleep. Okay. Don't really use a lot of electricity. Like that's a bare minimum, right? Five is more on the average side. Maybe it's a family. They watch moderate TV. They have central AC, but you know, not everybody's at home all day. Nobody's necessarily, maybe one person works out of the house. Six is on the extreme side. Hey man, we have central AC and we have a pool and a jacuzzi. Or we have a pool and an electric car. We work out of home. Like we use the lights and the AC all day long. Okay. That's the multiplication by six. Square footage times six. You could also go five and a half. So maybe it's not an extreme side, but it's not an average. You could take the square footage, multiply by five and a half, right? So now, whatever number that gives you, that is how many kilowatt hours per year you put. So let's say it's 1,500 square feet, right? By five and a half. What would that be? It's about 9,000 something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, on the two thousand square foot house. Yeah, so it depends on on the family, right? Let's say they tell me, yeah, we have a Tesla, we have a pool, we run the AC, wife works from home, and yeah, we we use a you know we use a lot of electricity. That's a, that's a six. Yeah, they got a pool and a Tesla. They work from home. They're letting you know that they, that's a multiplication by six, right? So now, okay, great. I just closed a deal the other day. A friend of mine, real estate agent, sends me a lead. Can you call this guy? He wants to go solar. One of his clients. Call the dude. I was at the bank. No. He gave the client my number. The client calls me, sends him a voicemail. I ask him, can you please text me? I didn't recognize the number. Text me back. Say, hey, Chris Odeyana, my realtor, refer me to you because I'm interested in going solar. Great. I'll, I'm at the bank. Can I call you in about 20 minutes? Yes. I call him. Schedule an appointment with him. Say, can you send me the bill? Says, oh, he says, I don't have a bill. I just moved in. No problem. Let me ask you a couple of questions. So I asked him these questions. Say, great. Can you text me your address? I'll text you my address. So I multiplied it. I don't remember what it was, like five, five and a half. And I show up to his house the next day, close the deal with no bill the next day. He didn't have furniture. We sat down on two, two foldable chairs and a cooler, an igloo cooler. I presented to him right there, boom, 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 close the deal, seven thousand dollars commission. Well, the bill's always going to be better, of course. But here's another: thing. I'm not going to let a deal slip by because I'm going to always try to offer them ten to twenty percent above what that number is. So I'm going to give them a buffer, anyways, right? But make this mistake and say, let's wait till you get the bill. Another dude's going to come by and sell them without a bill. Go ahead. Yep. That's true. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they'll tell you, yeah, but the last place is a lot different than this one. So then it would be different. But a lot of times it's similar. So what he's saying, not only that, even if it's different, it still gives you an idea, bro, like how much they're using per square foot as well, right? So, you know, that's why as a consultant, we want to ask the questions. For example, if at their old house, they didn't have central AC and a pool and the here they do, you want to take that into consideration, right? That's why working with a mentor and, you know, asking those right questions makes sense. A lot of people also shy away from roofs. I specialize in roofs, selling deals with roofs. Roofs, by the way, it's a big ass no brainer. We now get paid. You guys, uh, by the way, this is great information for you guys to know. We now get paid a hundred dollars per square on the roof so you sell somebody a house solar with a roof that job that we just sold we're getting paid a commission on that roof bro right hundred dollars per square so let's say it's 20 squares that's two thousand seventy percent of it is a commission so the mentee and the mentor get half of that right so in that case would be 1400 bucks right so you'd make an extra 700 bucks i would make an extra 700 bucks on that roof right but in california that's why I tell people, listen, man, if you can't close solar in California, you can't close a window because you know what? You got homeowner, Mr. Homeowner, you need a new roof. Yeah, I want to go solar, but I got to get a roof first. By the way, did you know that we can get you solar and a roof into one loan, get you a tax credit on the whole thing, and still you'll be paying less money than what you're currently paying for electricity, and you've got a, free, a, a new roof out of it. Let me give you a proposal. It doesn't hurt you to get a proposal. 
right? Somebody says, oh, I don't want to send, sometimes people don't want, some, I, I saw objection. If they don't want to send you the bill, hey, the worst thing I could do with your bill is pay it. I can't do anything with your bill, bro, right? But the point is when you get the, 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 the quote, let's say he's paying 250 bucks a month average and he needs a new roof. Well, shoot, I could go ahead. Matter of fact, let me show you. Check this out. You guys can still see my screen, right? Let's look at this here. Check this out. I, clo I closed this lady's friend last week. This is uh, Portia's uh, uh, referral. We sold her, and then that lady already referred me this lady. Look, so let's look at this guy here, Manuel Torres. This deal I'm closing this week 100%. I already sold to his son, who's an EXP agent, and bought solar himself. It's a wrap. If, if there's ever a deal that's a wrap, it's this dude. Okay, so we're taking him down to 74 bucks, right? 102% offset. Okay, so let's go. I, I, we're probably going to give him a better deal than that, but it's a small system. I think it's four kilowatts. How big is this system? 4.9. So let me go to a bigger system. Let's see here. This is better. So let's say this guy here, he's paying 240 a month. We're bringing them down to 122, giving him a great deal, right? $7,500 is a commission. Again, we're giving them a great deal, right? Minus 30%. So it's about 5,500 bucks or so. Okay. But check this out. He's going from 240 down to 122. We're cutting his bill in half and we're giving him 11% more electricity. That's a tremendous deal. Okay. Let's say this guy's house needs a new roof. Let's put 20,000 bucks for the roof. Is that a conservative number? Okay. So let's go. This guy's going from 240 down to 238. So he's only saving, this is bill slot, 238. But he's got a $20,000 roof out of it. Is that pretty good? 25 year, yes, 25 year, 199. He's getting a 25,000, excuse me, $20,000 roof. The thing is that it's a small system. It's a small price. Let's see what the price is. Let me take off the roof. <clears throat> See, it's only a twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars roof. More realistic would probably be about fifteen thousand. So let's go here. I don't think it's that big of a house. So, if it's a fifteen thousand dollar roof, he's still saving thirty-one dollars a month, and he's getting a roof out of it, and he's getting the tax credit on the whole thing, right? Instead of him coming out of his pocket, fifteen G's out of his pocket himself. Why not get it financed? And we could, the, the cool thing about our proposal, we could show the client right then and there, everything. And of course I could go out there and if I need to give them a little bit of a better deal, I could give them a little bit of a better deal if I wanted to, right? I could lower the commission. And this is with 30 year warranties from Solar Insurer, Roof Parts and Labor. So any other questions? Yeah, if you if you quoted them more than what it is, yes, it would go into the margin. Yep. Also, like let's say you want to give the client there's a commission. You could opt to take out your commission from it to give the client a better price on the roof. Matter of fact, Lewis and I just closed a deal two weeks ago or last week, and it was with a roof. The guy says, I want to go with my roofer. He's giving you a better deal, 16,500 bucks. We requested a proposal for power, 12,000. Oh shit. Well, let's leave it at the 16.5. That's what we quoted them. So it adds four Gs to the margin. Now, granted, 30% goes to power. We're not keeping the entire 4,000. Oh, well, shit. Cool. 